Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today I am excited to be bringing on two of the best experts that I know in eBay to talk about how to make your first $1,000 selling on eBay. And what's great is we go through in this interview talking about how you can do it starting with a dollar or $10 or even $0. And eBay to me is truly one of the best places, if not the best place to take very little money and turn it into quite a lot of money if you do the things the right way. And you'll see in this webinar with Greg Perry and Jeff Clark, the different items that they've sold recently in their account uh, and different things that you can do to start making money on eBay. But before we get into that, I always run a contest on my videos now, and I've been running contests for a free copy of my book. But what I'm gonna do for this particular video is I'm going to give away $47 to either in the form of PayPal or a gift card, whatever you would prefer, whomever the winner is, if you comment below and you become the lucky winner in the next video. So $47. And the reason is because if you were to join the Treasure Hunting Profits Facebook group with uh, Greg and Jeff, the, the cost for that is $47 per month. And so I want to give away $47 to whomever wins so they can pay for your first month in that group so that you can start turning uh, a lot of the items in your house or at other places into profits on eBay eBay. So all you have to do, comment below, hit the notification bell, and you'll be entered in to win the $47 straight to your account. Now, I won't double check this. You don't have to join the group, but it's still an awesome contest that I wanted to put out there because I believe so much in this group, and I think that it'd be a lot of fun uh, to give away some money that also would pay for the group, so you can then turn that into other things. And if you are interested in checking out a free webinar, as well as checking out Greg and Jeff's community, you can go to treasurehuntingprofits.com. The link is below and in the description. But without further ado, Let's go ahead and get into the interview with Greg and Jeff on how to make your first $1,000 selling on eBay. Hey, Greg. Hey, Jeff. Thank you so much for joining me on the Ask Jimmy Smith YouTube channel today. I'm really excited to have you guys here. Oh, we are glad to be here. Yeah, man. This is going to be great. Yeah. So as I said in the intro to this video, you guys are some of the foremost experts on, on eBay, um, and you have been just crushing it with the community that you both have put together. It's one of my favorite eBay groups, and I look at a lot of different communities out there. Uh, but today, what I'm excited to talk about on this channel is how to make your first $1,000 on eBay. And I, you know, as we've discussed, we want this to be a tactical webinar, one that people can take some, some of the advice and go out there and start making money with eBay. Uh, and so I'm really excited to get into this. Uh, but before we do, would you mind both giving me a little bit of a background on some of your experience? And then we can jump into that uh, the presentation there. Greg, would you mind starting? Uh, okay, sure. Uh, I've had 24 years of experience selling on eBay, sold things like huge rare book collections three times. I forgot that I sold my own. I sold two for other people. I do a lot of consignment selling. That, that, a lot of several seller accounts, although most people just need one, and um, thousands and thousands and thousands of feedbacks uh, over the 24 years. Zero, ne I mean, yeah, zero negative feedbacks over 24 years, and that is helpful. That's not a brag. That's something to to really strive for because eBay really will help your sales. The the better your account is, and the, because eBay wants to give new buyers a very good selling experience. And so our my goal is to just every single listing, I want to work as hard as possible for me. And I think I've achieved that. I've learned a lot of tips along the way, a lot of things no one else thinks of, not to brag. It's just because I've done it so much. And I'm sure Jeffrey can say very similar things. And so my, I, oh, and I love eBay. I mean, I just <laughs> really, really, really love it. I'm a big fan. I think it's a great reselling platform. And I just hope it comes across how much I care for it in, in, in the things that I do uh, publicly like this webinar. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. Jeff? Yeah, so I've been selling on eBay for 17 years, and um, I have one negative feedback. So Greg is obviously a better seller than me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've sold you know millions of dollars of stuff, uh, everything from uh, a box of empty toilet paper tubes, no lie, 
to um, bulldozer, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've had a lot of experience and the great thing, you know, one great one, one of the great things, there's so many great things about eBay. Well, one of the great things is that, you know, you can sell literally anything and like the toilet paper tubes. I did that just to see if I could, right? <laughs> like I didn't make a lot of money on it. It was like, I wonder if I could sell trash, right? <laughs> and somebody bought it. So, I mean, it's all part of, you know, how you put the listing together. But, um, but like Greg, I absolutely love eBay. So I sell on a bunch of different platforms, but eBay is by far my favorite. And that's one reason that I love doing this group with Greg is because he and I are so like-minded in our, our passion for eBay and our uh, knowledge for, you know, how to get the most out of it. And we both love teaching. So it's it's a, it's a perfect fit. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's pretty cool. I've looked at some odd, uh, oddball eBay listings before, and there's just people that sell like sticks, bundles of sticks and things, for yeah. crafts, I guess. <laughs> um, same with those toilet yeah. paper rolls. Um, you yeah. Know, a guy in, a guy in Britain, a guy in Britain finished his Christmas dinner, but didn't like his Brussels sprouts. And so he put his Brussels sprouts up on eBay <laughs> and sold them for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh I'm serious. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I know that this channel too, typically it talks about Amazon, but I've done a lot of videos or a few videos, I guess I should say on eBay, because I do believe in the power of eBay. I mean, to turn a dollar into a hundred bucks can happen, uh, very oh, much easier than on Amazon. That's for sure. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm really excited to start bringing more eBay content to the channel, um, you know, with the both of you. And, uh, so yeah, that's, this is the first, you know, I guess it might be the second webinar I've had you on before, Greg. So this is the second webinar, uh, with you guys, um, for eBay. And, and showing people how to start and grow their eBay businesses. So Jeff, I know that you've got a presentation. I'll let you go ahead and bring that up for how to make your first thousand dollars on eBay and some things that you wanted to, uh, to show uh, the audience today. All right, cool. All right. So yeah, making your first thousand dollars on eBay. Now that can sound like a lot of money, but it's really not. I mean, like Jimmy said, you can take a dollar and turn it into a hundred. And I literally do that kind of thing every single day. And I'm going to show you some examples here. But what I want to talk about is um, where are you going to find this stuff to sell? Like that's the first question that goes in everybody's mind if they want to start selling on eBay. Well, what am I going to sell? I have no idea what to sell. And that's frequently the first question that people ask me, Jeff, you sell on eBay? What do you sell? And my answer is, well, anything that'll make me money and, you know, doesn't keep me awake at night in cold sweats, right? I'm not going to sell something that, you know, violates my moral ethics, but otherwise, you know, I'll sell whatever makes me money. And it's surprising what kinds of things can make you money. So really making your first thousand dollars on eBay is just a matter of, of shifting your mindset. It's like changing your thinking. Um, one thing that Greg and I talk about frequently is um, getting people to think like outside the box. And of course, we're all stuck, you know, inside our own boxes. Like we think that uh, we think that everybody um, thinks like we do and values the same things we do. And Greg and I can talk about that a little more after this presentation. But I, I wanted to go through and just show everybody. Um, I have four different places in mind where you can easily, and I mean easily, find things to sell on eBay. And I'm going to give examples of these things from my own personal sales. And I'm going to say right up front, these sales that I'm sharing with you are only like from the last few weeks. So it's not like, well, yeah, I sold this one thing three years ago and I'm still talking about, I mean, no, these are just from the last uh, like three weeks or, or so. So the first place that you can find things to sell on eBay is from home. No lie. You've got things in your house right now that will make money. Seriously. Um, it can be, uh, you know, collectibles maybe that you've got, or it can be things that, uh, gifts you received that you never opened and, uh, you don't know what to do with. It can be things that your, uh, your parents handed down to you that just, it doesn't fit your style. You don't like these kinds of things anymore. It can be things that you bought, um, and just never used, um, even common things. We're going to look at some common things a little later on, but the first example I have of something that came out of my home is a little Funko Pop. So my daughter 
moved out and took things with her. She got a job in a different city and, you know, bought a house, set up her, her things and uh, left some stuff behind. And I said, Hey, are, are you done with all this? She goes, yeah, I, I, everything that I left behind, I don't want. I took everything that I want. So I went through her stuff uh, to redo the room. And I found this little Funko pop Hannibal Will Graham unopened box. And I thought, well, I know unopened boxes are worth looking up no matter what they are. So I looked this little guy up and, and look at that. He sold for 50 bucks. So that's a, and you can see down at the bottom here, this is, this is right from my eBay account where they break down what the buyer paid for shipping, what I paid for shipping, eBay fees, sales tax, all of that. And right at the bottom, that's what goes in my pocket. So here's something sitting around my house that if I hadn't thought about selling on eBay, I might've just tossed in the goodwill bin, right? But instead there's $43 in my pocket because I know how to sell stuff on eBay. Here's something else. Talk about handed down from your parents. I remember when my dad bought this chair for his office, it was like, I think 1979. Yes, I am that old. Shut up. Um, but this is a chair that he had in his office and it's fiberglass. Um, it, <laughs> you would not expect that something like this would sell. But again, this is part of thinking outside of, of uh, your regular thinking, right? It, it's just getting outside of your mind. And you, look, look at this, the buyer paid $130 for the chair and then they paid 178 for shipping. Now, what this doesn't show is I had to actually purchase shipping outside of eBay. So shipping cost me like 150. So at the bottom here, you see it says 263. You can take 150 off of that. That's still, you know, 113 bucks in my pocket. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can find things around your home that you can sell on eBay. Another place you can go is thrifting. Now, when I say thrifting, I mean going to garage sales, going to estate sales, uh, thrift stores, auctions. If you like auctions, personally, I love auctions. I think they're so much fun. Uh, I love the the noise and the auctioneer yelling and, and me yelling back at him, you know, with, with my bids and whatever and competing with other people and just poking around. And I love, you know, getting things for ridiculously cheap at auctions. Um, but that's the same reason that I love garage sales and estate sales too. So, um, you know, you may not think that you like this kind of thing. And honestly, before I started this business, I hated garage sales. Why would I want to poke around through somebody's used junk? Right? That's, that was my mindset. But once I figured out that, oh, there's, there's a lot of money there, there's a lot of gold. Well, now it became a treasure hunt, right? So I started treasure hunting profits, right? Just like the group. So the first thing I want to show you that I thrifted is a simple board game. Okay. Now you look at board games, you think, oh, well, you know what? I like the game um, Battleship. Okay. So I'm going to look for Battleship. Well, there's um, millions and millions of Battleships out there. Some are worth money, but most of them aren't. So the thing you want to look for is something weird. And I would say a game called Sod Buster is pretty weird, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a game about farming, apparently. I don't know. Um, but I paid a dollar for this at a garage sale. And I want you to understand, while I'm at the garage sale, uh, sometimes I look stuff up. Most of the time I don't. If I see something that's just weird, then it, dude, that catches my eye and I'm grabbing it. I saw a game called Sod Buster. And all I did is I, I put I took the lid off to make sure it had all the pieces and pay, easily paid a dollar for it, you know? So um, paid a dollar for this, sold it for 45 plus shipping. And again, looked out, look at my uh, payout right at the bottom there, 43 bucks. Uh -huh. That's not bad, not right? Bad. Turn a dollar into 43. That's something you want to do pretty much every day, right? Pretty much. And you mentioned you, you don't look up everything because you get to a point fast that you don't have to, but what you're for, for people new to eBay, you can look up items on your phone to see what they have recently sold for to know if it's worth paying a quarter for or not, or a dollar for or not. And that's what Jeffrey means by, I didn't even have to look this up. It's an odd game. It's not battleship where there are millions. And he just, you grow a sixth sense after a while that, yeah, this is, this is a pretty sweet deal. And at worst, you can sell it for 
fifth team, you know, I mean, it's not like, yeah, I mean, a dollar into 15 is not bad. Yeah. Right. (laughs) I'll take that any day. Yeah. So you're, you're going to, you're not going to lose money at these prices and, and the economy is of course horrible right now. It might get worse, but young people, they're kind of into, they're kind of into the environment and all of that whatever you think about that. And the thing is, hordes of young people, you know, teenagers and in their 20s are now going, I will only buy pre-owned items, which Mm -hmm. is a lie whenever the new iPhone comes out, but they'll only buy, they're they're looking for pre-owned clothing, pre-owned games, pre-owned things so that, you know, they're not contributing to the new items that will have to be landfilled or however the story normally goes. That's a big thing these days. So you wonder who would buy whatever Jeffrey's talking about here. A lot of people, probably more than ever. And as the economy gets worse, more and more people who aren't really in that mindset think, you know, instead of that brand new um, sweater that I wanted, maybe I want to go to eBay and find one that's like new, a new polo sweater that's like new. Mm -hmm. And this is... yeah. This is a great selling time. We're Je- usually in the summer, it's harder, but I think Jeffrey and I are finding sales are all of a sudden just really booming. I think the economy being bad has a lot to do f- with that, and it helps uh, people like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, agree. I would also say too, I mean, the words like thrifting, but also upcycling is really big. Um, and mm-hmm. so there's tons of different YouTube channels and uh, TikTok accounts that are people, you know, typically younger that are finding these, these older items, buying them and then turning them into something new or something more trendy, that kind sure. of a thing. And so I think that that's where eBay is continuing to pour uh, marketing dollars into as well, trying to market towards younger generation, which is good. Uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, younger people don't want to go to Amazon because they view it as kind of, um, you know, an older place to go and they don't want to spend all the money and they don't necessarily want to support Amazon, but they want to support eBay for whatever reason. And eBay continues to be a rock solid marketplace that a lot of people Absolutely. forget about. And that's why I'm excited about this. I mean, these, these things aren't just one-offs that you guys have collected a few sales that have worked for you and you're putting up. I mean, we've right. seen this for years, 24 years <laughs> that Greg's been on the platform. Right online, you know, it continues to grow. And so that's why I'm really excited for this. So um, there's tons of opportunity out there on eBay, in addition to Amazon and other marketplaces. But if somebody has a lower amount of capital, or you're looking to add another stream of income, uh, and you even if you're somebody that just wants to grow on eBay, because you're fed up with Amazon, this is the way to go. Um, right. And it's, it's just such an awesome opportunity for so many people right now. Yeah, I agree. And Greg said something really interesting. He said, uh, you might ask yourself, why would anybody buy this old stuff? And he made a great, great point about um, the younger generation wanting to um, upcycle, recycle, whatever, instead of buying new stuff. But another factor is a nostalgia factor. I mean, look at this game. This came out in 1980. Okay, so that's 43 years old at the time we're recording this. Well, somebody out there remembers playing this when they were a kid. Right. And they're like, well, I wonder if I can ever find that goofy farming game that I used to have as a kid. So they Google it and guess what comes up? My eBay listing comes up. And so, yeah, they're happy to pay 45 bucks to to relive their childhood. Right. Right. I mean, that's just that's just another reason. There are so many reasons like, you know, I, I used to I sell some of the weirdest, weirdest things. And I've honestly gotten to the point when somebody asks me, why would somebody buy that? My answer is, well, they wanted to help me pay my electric bill this month. Well, that's, the, that's the only reason I got, man. I don't know yeah. why anybody would buy this. All when, right. So here's here. Here's when another, I sell, a, yeah, when I sell a, a Kool-Aid packet, one of those five cent Kool-Aid packets, I am too young to remember them, but you two probably. <laughs> yes, um, of course. That I found in my mother's <laughs> cabinet that we were cleaning out recently, you know, a few years ago now, but when I sold that originally five cent pack of Kool-Aid that was mine as a kid that we never used for $110. (laughs) I love it. And when someone says, why in the world would someone pay $110 for a five cent pack of Kool-Aid? My answer is, I don't know. And I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> that's right that's yeah, right wow. i don't care all the way to the bank i don't care mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right 
All right. So another item that I thrifted, and this is another one you might say, why would somebody buy an old monitor? Like this is from the, the mid 2000s, I think, maybe early 2000s. I don't know, maybe late 90s. I'm not sure. But I picked this up for five bucks at a, a, an estate sale. And look at that, it sold for $150. Now, in this case, I do know why people buy these old CRT monitors. Um, it's because uh, people that play vintage video games, the graphics were not designed for flat screens, for plasma screens. And so the graphics don't show up the same. The graphics were designed for these CRT. CRT is cathode ray tube. So uh, that's one thing, like Greg said, after a while, you just get experienced and you know what things to look for. I always look for CRT monitors, CRT televisions, because uh, people at the sales, they don't want to deal with these. They're boat anchors, right? And so they're selling them for a couple dollars. This one went for five bucks. Frequently, I get these things for free because they don't want to deal with these big, heavy things. Well, I, I, I'll take them because I can sell them for a hundred bucks, 150 bucks every single time because I market to the, the retro gamers who want to watch their, their, to play their old games on them. All right. So thrifting is an excellent place to pick. Oh, and this shows no shipping because the guy lived close to me. And so we arranged a local pickup. So I actually didn't have to ship this big, heavy thing. And look at that 139 bucks in my pocket minus $5 buying cost. Wow. By golly. That's awesome. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that any day of the week. Mm -hmm. This was amazing. I literally got this for free. Now talk about something that's <laughs> that nobody wants, right? This is a vacuum from, I don't even know, man, mid 60s maybe. Um, but I, they literally were giving away for free. I bought a couple things at the garage sale. I saw it sitting there with a free sign on it. I said, is this really free? And they said, yes, please. A big, heavy thing. They didn't want to deal with it. Of course, I took it home, cleaned it up a little bit, worked fine, powered it up. And this sold for 250. You can see they paid me 140 shipping. Um, I, shipping cost me 124. So I made an extra 15 bucks or whatever. But look at that, $218 in my pocket from a free acquisition. That is infinite ROI. You cannot complain about infinite ROI. All For right. anybody that doesn't know, ROI is return on investment. So if anybody's new here, so if your investment was zero, you can't have a return on it. It's an infinite at that point. So that is sure. what Jeff's talking about. Right, right. So if your investment is a dollar and you sell it for two, you've made a hundred percent ROI. All right. So yeah, thrifting is an amazing place to find things. Another place to find things to sell is, believe it or not, retail stores. Like almost every retail store has a clearance section, a clearance shelf. Um, and it can be a little tedious, you know, trying to find it because they don't put the clearance shelves right out in front, right? Because right out front, they want the brand new things that are going to catch your eye and, um, you know, make you go, wow, and, and, and buy stuff. The clearance shelf is not a wow place unless you are literally going there to find money to make. Then it's a wow place. <laughs> but the wow uh, frequently is from items that are not very wow. This is oil filters. Now, how boring can you get oil filters? Seriously, everybody uses them. Nobody thinks about them. No, nobody, you know, you don't have to really... Um, advertise these. You don't have to sell them. It's not like, you know, the latest uh, sneakers or, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's not like a, a hot new toy that does cool things and you have to sell them to, to decide, you know, between the toys or the shoes they're buying. No, it's an oil filter. It either fits your car. It doesn't. End of story. Who cares, right? Well, I care because these were on like a 90% clearance. So I bought 10 of these at $1.20 a piece. My total buy cost was 12 bucks, listed them for 50 with free shipping. And look at that payout, $30 on a $12 purchase. That's more than doubling my money on one of the most boring things in the world. And uh, again, Greg said, you know what to look for? One of the things I look for is boring stuff, man. I'll look for filters. I'll look for, you know, things that utilitarian items that people use every day and nobody really thinks about. 
but man, there's a lot of money that you can make there. And here is another, this is kind of boring, I guess. It's a vegetable laxative. That's not just boring. That's embarrassing, <laughs> right? Nobody wants to, to go into a store and say, hey, I got problems. I need a laxative, <laughs> right? You're not going to announce that to the world. So instead, you're going to secretly go online and try to find a laxative. <laughs> so these, again, were on clearance. They were uh, $9.75 a piece. So my total uh, buy-in was $19.50. And look at this payout, $47. Again, more than doubling my money on eBay. Now, if you do buy um, health products, or uh, some beauty products or food products or whatever to sell on eBay. One thing you really need to watch for is the expiration. You can see I put right into the title expiration January of 24 and these sold in May of 23. So they've got plenty of time to use their laxatives before they expire. So that's one thing to, uh, to watch out for. But those are just some examples of things you can find at uh, at retail stores. Another I thing like that you can do if you have a difficulty just, finding things yourself is you can do consignment, which is you just sell things for other people. And this is easier than you might think. You know, I, I, if uh, when we start selling online, if it really, really resonates with you and you think, wow, this is the most fun I've ever had, much better than punching a clock, then you might think, again, you think that everyone thinks like you, you might think, well, I better not tell anybody what I'm doing because everybody will want to do it and then I'll have competition all over the place. That is so not true. I could teach my next door neighbor this and <laughs> it wouldn't affect my bottom line at all. Literally, very, very, very few people that you tell are interested in taking your business away from you. You start telling people what you do, and they will literally bring you things to sell. Sometimes they'll ask you to sell for them. Sometimes they just give you things for free. My neighbor, two doors away, um, gave me, he, he literally texted me and said, hey, I'm cleaning out my basement. I found a couple old beer signs. Do you want them? And he knows that I sell online. He knows exactly what I'm going to do with them. He didn't say, will you sell these for me and give me money? He just said, do you want them? Go sell them. Go make money. I don't care. <laughs> and I did. I made like 150 bucks out of the two of them. So, that you know, literally tell people what you do. Here's something that I sold on consignment. This is a good friend of mine from church. He just had a handful of things. I went over to his house. We looked through his things. Um, this is just a little model RV. Uh, Johnny Lightning is a brand. Um, they make like little like matchbox style cars, but like racing cars and stuff. And this is from 2002. It's a little RV motorhome. And look at that, man, it sold for a hundred bucks plus shipping. And here's our payout, 8908. That means that um, 40, 49, uh, 54 for each of us for just a few minutes work. Literally, that's that's not a bad payday. Here's something else that I sold for a good friend of mine, um, an old record album, um, the old 78 style. That sold for 85 bucks. Here's another great payout, $75. So that's uh, that's 35, 37 50 for each of us. That's a pretty good payday for just a few minutes work. Look at this one. Sold this for a friend of mine too. This is a 1989 book on farming, sold for $200, no lie. Look at this, 168.20 divided by two is $84.10 just for a few minutes work on my part. Man, consignment can be a great, great thing. So those are some great ways to find inventory, easy really easy ways mm -hmm. to immediately find inventory to sell on eBay. And a lot of it, like I said, is just changing your, your mindset. Absolutely. And I know uh, a few of the ones that you mentioned. So let me make sure that I got these. So you've got things around your home, which everybody has already paid for those. So you don't have to invest any additional money into that. You got right. thrift stores that you can go and do or garage sales, right? From a thrifting perspective, you have retail consignments and stuff from around your house. You don't even have to pay for inventory. And so I love that, um, that those are some options. And even some of the thrifting and garage sales, you can pay a dollar for things and turn them into hundreds of dollars. And uh, oh, heck yeah. so there's just uh, such an 
opportunity with eBay to do that, that you can't do with Amazon because they don't allow um, them to be, I mean, you could sell them as used, but there's so many fees that come out. It's just a better platform on eBay. Um, so I just really love the opportunity for people to take $10 and turn it into hundreds of dollars or to take no dollars and turn it into hundreds of dollars. If you talk to other friends and family that are looking to get rid of stuff, it's such a, a low hanging fruit opportunity that uh, you can do the work, you can get the inventory and split it with them on a consignment basis. I just love that. Um, and so Greg, oh, I know sure. that you've got some things that you wanted to add real quick. So I'll let you jump in here. Well, just to kind of wrap it up, really, I mean, your first thousand dollars, that's on the low side by <laughs> doing just a few things Jeffrey has said. And oh, if yeah. you're worried about, I don't know what this used stuff is worth, again, the eBay app, will, the phone app will just tell you what they sold for recently. And that's all. You just want a general range. And then when you first start selling, you might want to be on the middle to lower end of that range and build up your account and mm -hmm. sell through a few things. Show eBay, you do what you say, you'll ship when you say you will. If shipping makes you afraid, well, as a seller, I'm really glad that shipping items like really makes a lot of people who would otherwise be sellers not want to do it, but it's really easy. <laughs> and we'll show you, if you come to our group, we'll show you really how to make things easy for shipping and cheap. And it's, it's really nothing. If it, if it were a big deal, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, right. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, really don't let that frighten you. Let's let it frighten people that might want to sell against us, but not you, all of you. We want, we, we want you to join in the fun. The water's, the water's right. So just kind of, and the, the only thing that I hear regrets of is I just wish I'd started sooner. I mean, wow, two years ago when we had all those things that we gave away to, you know, to Uncle Pete, who is no longer with us or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, everyone, but don't worry about regrets like that. Just start, start now. And if you don't like, if you're, Jimmy said he, a lot of his audience here, and, and I, I knew that are Amazon resellers and Amazon's sexy and retail arbitrage and Amazon handles all of your shipping for a convenience fee that's pretty hefty. And uh, instead of you making money on shipping, Amazon does, but Amazon's great. Amazon, you can, you can leverage Amazon, unlike you're probably not going to find 1000 VCRs at once and just sell them all at once. Like you would just ship them to Amazon FBA. But if you're worried about what to sell on eBay, almost everything sells i mean it just almost sells eventually and maybe you need to price you know look at comps look at comparables of past sales price in the lower range for a while until you just get comfortable you're going to make a thousand pretty fast but your goal right now when you first start is not to make a lot of money oh that's great your goal is to just learn it and get better and better at it so that after that first thousand you really will have a, a ramp to really leverage that up pretty well you'll you'll you will have learned a lot after making the first thousand and it's not going to take you very long to do that mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so one of the things too, I know there's a ton of thing, you know, different questions that people could come up with, whether it's how do I do the listings or how do I do the shipping or do I do buy it now versus auctions and um, all of these little considerations. Uh, and that's what I love too about the Treasure Earning Profits group is you guys are so active in the community. Greg, I know you make tons of videos all the time, um, consistently each each week, at least uh, you're making another video. And so uh, it's just really awesome to see the, um, uh, the camaraderie within the group and how much much activity there is because there's questions too that you're able to answer consistently the both of you um and there's a membership group tons of really awesome features for being a part of treasure hunting profits but if anybody's interested in a, um, even another webinar if you want to find out more information on selling on ebay if you go to treasurehuntingprofits.com the link will be below and in the description you can see at the bottom of that page that there is another webinar that greg did with ryan rieger um, and so if you want to find out more information about selling on ebay and some extra tips too that we may not have had a chance to cover today, going to treasureearningprofits.com will help you to find that. Uh, the group, I believe, uh, pays for itself very quickly. Uh, it's $47 yeah. a month currently, um, and that may change in the future. But as of the time of this recording, it's $47 a month. And to me, that is a bargain. I know whenever I joined, it was a few years ago, uh, within a couple months, and this isn't 
what's going to happen for everybody is disclaimer, but I believe I remember posting a screenshot of making over $900 on eBay within the first few months from just some of yep. the stuff that I had as Amazon returns because I was selling on Amazon <laughs> and these things were just laying around and we decided to, to post on eBay. Uh, and so it's a really awesome group, a ton of, of help from between the members and a ton of content for not just the basics of eBay, but also expanding your reach on eBay and really um, making it a, a solid business um, that a lot of people can rely on. So Greg, Jeff, is there anything else that you'd like to mention while we are on this call right now? I know that we're going to do more videos in the future, uh, but anything else that you think is pertinent uh, before we hop off? Uh, sure. I mean, you mentioned, um, getting started on ebay but i mean and you know making your first thousand is for people who aren't selling on ebay now mm -hmm. but um yet you're right the group is not only for beginners on ebay but man there is some advanced really really advanced information that even the most seasoned ebay expert i mean greg and i we learn from each other all the time greg posts a new video and i can't wait to watch it because i'm sure i'm going to learn something and then he'll message me and say man that video you posted i never thought about that yeah. Yeah. so there's uh, there's something for everybody in that group awesome. and and people are not a lot of our group members they know that they're not worried about the competition because they are the competition once, they, <laughs> That's once right. they've learned a few things from this it's one of the most advanced even for beginners one of the most advanced groups on how to really maximize ebay that that exists on, in the whole not just on facebook but not just on the web, but just anywhere. It's very, very I agree. teaching that you will not find elsewhere. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate the time that you put into putting that together and for hopping on this call with me. Really excited to do more stuff with you in the future on the channel and doing some extra webinars and things. But for anybody that's interested, head over to treasureunningprofits.com to check out more, uh, whether it's the extra webinar that's on that page or if you're looking to join the group and try it out. Uh, I'm really excited to have you all in there. And uh, thank you to the both of you for being on today. So I hope everybody has a great rest of your day, a blessed rest of your week, and we will see you next time. Bye -bye. Awesome. Thanks, Jimmy. Hey, thank you so much for checking out that video with Greg Perry and Jeff Clark on eBay. I am really excited for this group. Again, it is one of my favorite groups I've ever been a part of over the last few years for learning about eBay and how to sell online, uh, especially uh, on the eBay marketplace. They cover other marketplaces too and treasure earning profits. But if you're interested in a free webinar as well as the uh, the content of the community, if you'd like to join the treasure earning profits community, go to treasureearningprofits.com. Also, don't forget that if you'd like to be entered in for a chance to win $47, uh, directly to your PayPal account or in a form of a gift card, just comment below, hit that notification bell and make sure to tune into the next video where I'm going to announce the winner of this contest. So I hope that this video helped you, encouraged you and motivated you to sell on eBay. And I can't wait to see you inside the Treasure Hunting Profits community. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.